7th episode of OP Talks. In this episode, we are going to talk on an important issue of impact of lockdown and COVID-19 on the lives of lakhs of children from Odisha from the nutritional and social aspects of their life. In this program, we are joined by Mr. Ghasiram Panda, who is the program manager with Action Aid and has been working on the issue of child rights for many years. And we have our next guest as Mr. Saurabh Bhattacharya, who has been working as a nutrition specialist with UNICEF for last many years. Thanks a lot, Mr. Bhattacharya and Mr. Panda for joining on this special conversation on the issue of lockdown, COVID-19 and their impact on the lives of children of Odisha. Let's first move to Mr. Bhattacharya from UNICEF Odisha. Mr. Bhattacharya, do you think that in the last two, three months of lockdown curbs in Odisha, the nutritional status of children of Odisha has been hampered or affected by any way? And what long-term implications we can expect from the sudden changes that came along the lockdown curbs and COVID-19? Yes, uh, COVID-19 outbreak is uh, upending life for families around the world. Uh, there are disruptions to the food system, which means that some foods are actually very difficult to find and specifically nutritious foods have uh, almost become out of reach of the most vulnerable population for the simple reason that unemployment and lost income has made food purchase purchase an additional financial burden a financial challenge there's a recent statement which i was reading uh, this is a joint statement which has been issued by the indian public health association um, indian academy of preventive and social medicine and the indian academy of epidemiologists which says that across the country the mortality attributable to the lockdown itself primarily because of the total shutdown of health services and livelihood disruption of nearly the bottom half of the Indian population may overtake life saved due to lockdown mediated slowing of the COVID-19 progression. And this is one of the major reasons why I feel that we need to do something very fast even though there are a lot of things which are being done so that the nutritional status of kids in Odisha are not negatively affected due to this prolonged lockdown and the ensuing nutrition insecurity. Mr. Panda, you have been working with the migrants for the last two to three months. Do you think that a lot of children from these migrant families are getting delinked from the institutional centers like Anganwadi centers and others? And what long-term impacts you think could have when a lot of children are getting dealing with the institutional care system. Yeah, if you see the current scenario and the status that most of the institutions uh, are closed is because uh, it is difficult to maintain social distance and all other norms in all those institutions. So uh, to protect them from uh, uh, this corona uh, that the institutions uh, have been closed, uh, but uh, um, Government has taken some initiative to provide uh, the tag home rations and drive food uh, to the children. But in some cases, like if you'll see the cases of midday meal in schools, uh, only rice has been given. But uh, in the cooked hot cooked meal, uh, in addition to the rice, uh, they usually got uh, egg and uh, dal. Uh, but this is now not uh, uh, been provided. Uh, and apart from uh, that, you will see children are also walking on the street with their parents coming back to their home. So uh, they are uh, neither getting good food, uh, let us forget about nutrition even, uh, even they are not uh, able to get food, water and all uh, the kind of support for sanitation and uh, these things. So uh, they are actually suffering a lot. Mr. Bhattacharya, you have hinted that there was definitely some impact on the nutritional status of children of Odisha during this lockdown period. Can you explain to us that if a child is going to miss nutritious food during a period of two to four months or it may elongate to six months, 
then what impact it can have on their overall health before going into that i would just like to mention one thing is that in odisha while we have done extremely good in terms of uh, the other uh, nutrition indicators um the supplementary foods and feeding um it it kind of it has uh, between the two nfhs it has actually shown a uh, uh, reduced status children in general in the normal cases also children were not getting adequate uh, food to eat uh, you know ad adequate in the sense of um, um, in the sense of diet diversity like we talk about that a child's plate should have all the three colors of the indian flag we call it tiranga bhojan which is a very nutritious diet which is a home based diet which needs to uh, which which is provided to the to the kids but if they are not getting that then then a lot of impact on the child's health can happen for example uh, the stunting levels for which odisha was doing pretty good till now because of prolonged uh, food insecurity the stunting levels may go up wasting levels were already between when we are looking wasting is a more serious kind of uh, malnutrition the wasting levels uh, were already showing a verge of an upward trend and there were the state had been taking lot of actions proactive actions but this lockdown with children with those kind of vulnerable children actually having less access to the health services for obvious reasons because of fear or to approach the health systems um the wasting levels can also go up and as a result what can happen is 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 a situation where uh, malnutrition you suddenly see that the levels of malnutrition among kids goes up if we go by the government surveys like the national family health survey Odisha has made progress in terms of their social indicators health indicators in the last few decades Mr Bhattacharya do you think that during this lockdown all the progress all the data the social indicators progression that Odisha has seen could get a setback Odisha has a very unique kind of a situation Odisha is the third 11th largest state in India with a large rural population and scheduled tribes constituting around 23% of the population um uh, and scheduled castes around 17% so scheduled tribes in odisha uh, is actually makes odisha the state with the third third uh, among the scheduled uh, states makes it ha have a large proportion of scheduled tribe population over the past last decade that is 10 years we have seen that chronic malnutrition which is basically the stunting it has actually come down from 45% in 2005 6 to 34% in 2015 16 which is a reduction of almost 24.2% over the last 10 years um and odisha has always been faster so the annual uh, rate of reduction in childhood stunting which is one of the most persistent and hence most difficult forms of malnutrition to address is stands at 2.73% which is higher than the national rate rate of 2.2%. Um, Similarly early initiation of breastfeeding within one hour has improved from 25% to 55% during the same period. Exclusive breastfeeding during the first 6 months has increased but this lockdown is actually a, a kind of a state a kind of situation to anticipate not not the common man not the government also no one could anticipate that this kind of a situation would arise and hence people have actually been forced to go into lockdown to prevent the uh, ad hoc or very rapid spread of the disease till now we have confined our discussion to the nutritional aspects to the migration issues but do you people think that the social aspects of children living in rural areas and other parts of the state do you think that the social aspects of their life is also at stake and a lot of social problems are also likely to likely to be reported in the days to come mr panda what what do you think about this issue the impact on the social life of children due to lockdown uh, see what saurabh ji now uh, told that uh, when this uh, income is being affected uh, the purchasing capacity is being affected then the, how the parent would be able to feed their children the livelihood option has been affected 
and now more people will come if you in odisha we have two different kind of the uh, migration one is a kind of uh, permanent set of uh, that people they go and stay they are usually come to their natives but there are also seasonal migrations uh, where um, the whole family they go to a particular area they work there earn something and come back uh, in this uh, context of covid they are now coming uh, without completing the whole uh, period um, many are um, coming uh, with a uh, that uh, that situation has forced them to come to the their uh, villages and uh, in village also they may not have that opportunity uh, uh, for income generation kind of uh, mg energy won't be able to cater the need of all categories of people there are uh, this um, family who are working in a uh, set of industry uh, in a plastic industry or in a plywood industry or in a brick cleans the mg energy may not uh, uh, create interest among them and also don't have that scope to engage everybody uh, so uh, the uh, immediate uh, kind of requirement is uh, uh, to provide them that sorts of supports where uh, they can start their own uh, entrepreneurial activities some kind of income generation activities so which is actually going to take time in this uh, uh, context one more thing will also uh, that uh, may occur that will, there are a lot of children coming to uh, these uh, these uh, native places uh, and the rate of dropout will also uh, going to increase uh, so we have to identify all those children and uh, the enumeration process of all those children also need to be taken care of so that at least we can bring them to schools and school is comparatively a safer place um, uh, for uh, for the children so uh, children uh, are the worst affected in this whole uh, scenario at this uh, at this point of time i think the lockdown has impacted more or less all seg segments of the people but which section of the people in india or especially when we talk about odisha is likely to get worst hit during the lockdown especially when we talk about children and their health mr bhattacharya which segment do you think is going to be the worst hit due to lockdown as i was mentioning that uh, uh, basically the loss of livelihoods uh, for a prolonged i mean economic it's uh, i would rather say loss of livelihood in the sense that economic activities are impacted and also people who are working in some part of the country are actually moving back to other part of the country where they may like what bhashiram was also mentioning they may or may not have similar kind of economic activities so the the most vulnerable are those who who continue to be the most vulnerable in the society for example as i mentioned in odisha um, uh, the, the migrants who who may be uh, of the more uh, of the scheduled tribes or the scheduled schedule scheduled castes or the scheduled tribe population um, if they actually lose their income they were already nutritionally and otherwise also vulnerable if they now lose their income then they would definitely be affected more uh, because earlier also you know they are uh, ex they are kind of geographic um, distance from the point of service delivery where where they wherever they were staying they were already kind of a little bit isolated and it was difficult for even service providers to reach service them mr panda you have worked a lot in the sector of prohibition of child marriage you are also a member of different committees of the government on child marriage some media reports in the last few months have hinted that the lockdown poverty and other issues related to lockdown and covid-19 is directly going to have impact on child marriage do you think that the child marriage cases are likely to go up in the next few days after the lockdown ends completely what is your take on that uh, we talk about child marriage the pushing factors are mostly the poverty uh, and uh, the social norms Uh, these are uh, some of the uh, things that usually push uh, the child marriage um, so in this present context if we will see uh, poverty is going to increase uh, and uh, definitely one of the factor uh, going to be strengthened so we are actually expecting that covid is going to induce the uh, child early and forced marriage 
the other part of this is uh, now as all the frontline workers are very much busy in addressing covid uh, situation that the community level tracking and monitoring is also uh, widely affected uh, so um, nobody is there to uh, really um, uh, respond to all those things thanks a lot panelists for taking part on this special conversation on the role of covid-19 on the lives of lakhs of children in odisha dear viewers please subscribe to our youtube channel of odisha post live to keep updated on the upcoming shows of op talks till then bye bye